So I'm ready to take questions from our live audience tonight. Who's first? Gwyneth. I have a question about the cacao powder. Yes. Um, I know that in a traditional grocery store there's uh, cocoa. What's the difference between cacao powder and cocoa? The cacao is raw. It's just straight off the tree ground. The cacao, uh, the cocoa is probably processed with alkali, with heat. You've got to read your ingredients. There's all kinds of things that could be going on. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yes? Uh, where can we find some of these gadgets that you're using for um, the preparation of these meals? Um, which gadgets were you talking about? Um, the cookware, for example, and the... Uh... The cookware you can buy from me. Um, a lot of the other things, like this thing, the dehydrator, you get from Kitchen Capers. Yes? These goji berries were delicious. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what a goji berry is? They don't grow in my garden, so I don't All right, it's a, it's a fruit from the Himalayas. And near the salt. Pardon? It grows near the salt. Mm, possibly, yeah. <laughs> Um, it's just a fruit, very unique fruit that's then dried. Um, it's a very wonderful medicinal fruit, has a 5,000 year history for all kinds of issues. Um, in Tibet they call them happy berries because they do elevate the mood. By the way, for a holiday kind of a snack, if you put these two things together, you have the world's most wonderful antidepressants. Chocolate, chocolate, and goji berries. And the chocolate is bitter, of course. Gojis are sweet, perfect complement. And the colors, you know, the dark go chocolate and the red goji. Gojis are very good soaked, too, overnight. I just fill up a jar half full of gojis and then up to the top with water. And by the morning, they've taken up most of the liquid and are very beautiful to look at. They look happy. <coughs> On the same goji theme, um, why do you need to use the goji powder if you're using the goji berries in that? In that uh, well, uh, just in this form, you use it like a spice, as a topping. Okay. So uh, it has quite a different flavor, actually, in the concentrated powder form. It's similar to cinnamon. I have a question about the um, salts. You yeah. mentioned um, sea salt and Himalayan salt. And you know, I have high blood pressure, and um, so I'm supposed to keep my salt intake down. Would mm -hmm. they have a similar effect as, you know, like table salt? No. In fact, I have a <coughs> client, a former client whose husband is a cardiologist. He's had high blood pressure his whole life. And his wife, when she was working with me, she changed the salt on their table, and his blood pressure normalized. This is an amazing sub substance called an adaptogen. Like if you've got low blood pressure, this can raise it. If you've got high blood pressure, it brings it down. So it adapts you and brings you toward the middle in many different ways. So this is not a dangerous salt. This is a healing salt. Kim. You talked about preparing the millet and the beans ahead of time, which seemed to me, it struck me as time consuming, but necessary for many of these recipes. So I wondered if you could do that ahead of time. Um, you mentioned having it on hand. Like if you do that ahead of time, how long will they stay fresh? Uh, beans, probably last four days. Millet, the same. <coughs> okay. And can you freeze them? You can, yeah, you can freeze anything. I wouldn't, personally, just because you lose more nutrients okay. from freezing. Eugene? Yes? Um, you mentioned leaving the skins on, I think, I think it was the root vegetables. It, it, it didn't sound to me they were, like, yes. like you always did that. It, that sounded to be a, 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 a <clears throat> departure from the norm for you. I've always heard the skins have more nutrients. Is that true or is that fiction? Yeah, that's true. A lot of nutrients are concentrated near the skin. Unfortunately, with things like apples or pears that are waxed, you know, you've got to compromise a little. Either wash them with a wax removing produce wash or peel them. Yes, Bernie. Are even organic 
apples and pears wax? Absolutely. Yeah. Unfortunately. What about flowers with the wheat-free crust? You put oat flour and brown rice flour. Why do you need both, or do you need both? You could do it with one flour. Yeah, just um, it produces a nice synergistic <coughs> flavor, mix the oat and the rice. I've also made it with spelt and oat, or rice and spelt. You can mix and match your grain flours. And a question about uh, mirin. Is that a brand or a type? No, that's the product. The product is rice wine? The product is mirin rice wine. It's made by the Eden Company. This company here. Yes. Is, is it possible on the market anywhere um, to find uh, um, some kind of grain or flour that has been allowed to sprout? I know you can find sprouted bread um, pretty easily, but how about a sprouted flour that you can um, safely use for cooking? It would save you that, the time. I've never found it, only in the breads. Hmm. No, I think you have to do it yourself. Pretty. In the, in the store, sometimes the problem <coughs> is finding these things. Uh, so the, the uh, vinegar here and a few of the other things you mentioned, where are they going to be in the store? Those would usually be in an international type aisle. As opposed to just with the oils and... Other condiments, um, yeah. But I mean, you can always ask an employee where to find things. Yes? When you are not, on a week where you're not hosting your events, how many hours a week do you spend grocery shopping? <laughs> And I'm in the store. I'm not talking about um, to and from. They're in the store. You know, I've never thought about that question. Probably six hours a week. Six hours in the grocery mm -hmm. Because I live, you know, where I live, it's kind of a daily thing. And I do take my time shopping. Even if I'm buying a product I know, I will usually read the ingredients again because companies are always, you know, reducing their bottom line in some way, and you find it out by reading the ingredients. Beth, did you have another question? Yeah, I was just wondering, because you made a comment about um, genetically modified wheat, and I guess I had always been under the impression that wheat was better for you than, you know, what you seem to well, yeah, I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, like the whole thing I, I was taught, oh, you're going to eat bread, eat whole wheat bread. And that type of well, you know, that can actually be worse, mm -hmm. especially for certain blood types, because the inflammatory part of the wheat is in the brown. It's the wheat germ, agglutinin, they call it. So you get more of that in the whole wheat. So they're actually genetically modifying things when they process... <laughs> When it's grown. Okay. Yeah, it's like gene splicing and different kinds of things like that, okay. which are becoming so common. Mm -hmm. And in America, these foods do not have to be labeled as such. Mm -hmm. So it's happening right under our noses, and most people don't know. Any other questions? Okay, thank you all. Look forward to getting together again. Thank you. Thank you.